Let's see. Bill, junk mail, AOL installation disk. Ah, here we go. Dear Tim and Moby, I read that the Constitution was written more than a decade after America declared its independence. So how were things run for all that time? From Parker. <laughs> Great question, Parker. You're right. The United States became independent in 1776, but the Constitution didn't go into effect until 1789. That's a 13-year gap. To answer that, let's go back to July of 1776 at the Pennsylvania State House in Philadelphia. Uh, Wait, I... <laughs> meant that figuratively. This is the second Continental Congress, made up of representatives from the 13 colonies. Last week, on July 4th, they adopted the Declaration of Independence. They've just taken on the biggest empire the world has ever seen. But the founders weren't just speaking to England. The Declaration was telling the world, we're here and we are the United States of America. In reality, there was very little that united them. The states each had their own culture and laws. Each could coin its own money, form its own armies, even make its own treaties. So Americans didn't really think of themselves as Americans. They were New Yorkers, Pennsylvanians, Virginians. But these guys knew they couldn't beat the British without a united front. First off, fighting with one army is a lot more efficient than fighting with 13 separate armies. Also, America needed support from nations like Spain and France. These countries wouldn't send money or soldiers unless the Americans got their act together. They wanted to be sure their loans would be repaid. So Congress immediately went to work creating a national government. The result was the Articles of Confederation, America's first constitution. Yep, they knew they had to act fast. At the same time, they didn't want to rush into anything they'd regret later. Each state worried that the national government might favor other states. So they came up with a simple solution, make the new government too weak to favor anyone. Well, the Articles defined America as a firm league of friendship between sovereign or independent states. It was more like a voluntary organization than a binding set of laws. The national government included one House of Congress and not much else. It had a few specific powers, like making wars and treaties, printing money, and settling disputes among states. Each state got one vote in Congress for a total of 13. Bills could only become law after receiving nine of those votes. With the states so deeply divided, getting that many votes was next to impossible. Even if a law did pass, there was no real way for Congress to enforce it. Yeah, during the war, that created some problems. Congress couldn't levy taxes to support George Washington's army. He could ask states for money, but there was no way to actually collect it. As a result, the army almost starved to death during cold, harsh winters. After the war was won, the states acted more like rivals than parts of the same nation. For one thing, they each raised cash by taxing each other's goods. They kept minting their own money, even though they weren't supposed to. And instead of pooling the debts they had run up during the war, they tried to repay them separately. The national government had debts too, and it couldn't collect taxes to repay them. All it could do was issue paper money, which lost value with every new printing. To make matters worse, the government couldn't protect the country's borders. Britain still had forts on American soil, but the army was too weak to do anything about it. It's hard to believe now, but at the time, it seemed like the new nation might collapse. Things came to a head in 1785. Angered by poverty, taxes, and broken promises, a group of farmers revolted against the government of Massachusetts. The National Congress could do nothing about Shays' rebellion, so a local militia had to put it down. The writing was on the wall. America needed a strong central government. In 1787, state representatives met to discuss changing the Articles of Confederation. Many argued for starting over with a whole new document based on federalism. That's a system where states share power with a strong national government. 
The delegates wound up drafting the Constitution, which set up a government that could flex some muscle. It could enforce laws, collect taxes, and manage the nation's finances. Of course, the issue of state versus federal power never really went away. It was a major flashpoint in the lead-up to the Civil War. And the Supreme Court still hears cases on the topic to this day. Hey, check it out, the Liberty Bell. Okay, I think we're finished here.